Hey everybody, welcome to the introduction of coding types. So today I want to talk about the four essential coding types that you must have heard about and um, a lot of you might be confused as to how do these operate. Uh, so the four types essentially are static, dynamic, weak and strong. And I hope by end of this video you would have a clear understanding of all these four types. I'm not going to get uh, tangential here and talk about the merits and demerits of these types. I'm merely going to call out which type is good and which type is typically used for what kind of languages uh, and what kind of scenarios. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first type is of course the uh, static typing and static typing is uh, kind of the superset of the other two or other three if you may because it sort of encompasses everything else that the others might have omitted for reasons that you know you will come to know as you go through this uh, uh, this slides. So the first thing here is that you're, you're seeing that uh, you know, we are trying to basically add two values, which is sum and num, and you've given assigned two values to them. So basically, if sum has been assigned 10 and num has been assigned 5. But what you really would have noticed is that they have to initialize the code and explicitly declare both these as integers. So that's what is the first thing that you have to do when you're starting off the code. So that's like an extra line of code, if you may. But that's necessarily what uh, a static typing does. It sort of makes your entire code really explicit. So uh, not only for you, but for somebody else also, it becomes very clear as to what is the purpose that you are using this particular uh, variable for. So that is static typing. Now, if you remove the, the first line of that, you know, which is initializing the code, it becomes dynamic typing. So here is a Python code and exactly the same thing that we have done previously. Uh, but here we're not initializing uh, the uh, the variable as integer or any type, uh, and the reason is because this is dynamic type, and uh, you know here the uh, the the code itself, the, in the interpreter itself assumes uh, that if you assign num equal to five, that means it must be an integer. So it sort of goes and puts that as an integer into the memory, and it does that for you. So this is faster typing, uh, but you're not initializing it. Uh, then let's get into strong typed and weak type. So strong type codes are the codes where once you have initialized something, you cannot change the value of that code uh, or you cannot concatenate it with something else which is not that same type. For example, here you're declaring a value foo to um, and assigning it to x which is, in, which is of course a string. Uh, and then you're going and taking that same foo and adding 2 to it, which is obviously an integer. So this is illogical because you're adding a string and uh, an integer, which in programming parlance, everybody knows that that doesn't work. Okay. Uh, but uh, there are some languages which allow these also, and that's absolutely unopinated languages. These languages assume that if you declare something as a string, then you have to declare the other thing also as a string. Then you mean that to be concatenated. Otherwise, if you're declaring two as two, you know, Python will go ahead and throw up an error message and it will say cannot concatenate string and integer, which is exactly what it is assuming that you're trying to do. Uh, but as I was mentioning, you know, you can do this in some languages. So for example, JavaScript is a good example where you can go ahead and declare a variable. You can call it a string hello world. And later you can go ahead and add it to an integer too, uh, because, you know, the Java, JavaScript interpreter, interpreter doesn't really care much or it sort of assumes that you're doing this for a particular reason and it and it puts the onus on the programmer rather than taking care of some of that load onto itself. So it doesn't throw up an error message and it just gives you the value the way it is. And sometimes this is the kind of behavior you would want to expect out of it which is fine but uh, you know most of the time you might not want that behavior and you want it to be throwing an error because syntactically this is incorrect. Uh, but you know, weak typing languages don't restrict you to do that. So with that, let's just look at the spectrum of these languages. So if you look at the the bottom end, it's basically weak typing. So JavaScript and Perls are good examples of a weakly typed language, which doesn't restrict the uh, the coder uh, from uh, you know playing around with the code and, and not allowing it doesn't restrict you from your creativity in terms of how you want to declare it and how you want to sort of assign it. Strongly typed languages on the other side, uh, sort of, while they, uh, you know, while Python was a good example of where it is dynamic, but it is strongly typed. 
So while Python allows you to not initialize a value uh, by declaring its type, it once you have declared its type, it doesn't allow you to change uh, or or it doesn't allow you to you know use that type with another type. So it it doesn't assume that it says that no, I want you to explicitly call that out. So that's really important as a as a developer if you're learning a programming because uh, when you're coding, you might have situations where you know you might not realizing realize that you're making this mistake. Uh, but there are other situations where you might not want <coughs> you know the uh, the uh, the interpreter or uh, or the language to become a hindrance as to what you're doing. So in that case, JavaScript is a beautiful language. Uh, and Python is a great language if you're starting out because it sort of, you know, checks and balances and tells you, hey, you're going wrong here. You're not doing the right thing here. And of course, if you go on top of the tree, then Java sits there. It's a static language. Uh, it has got features where it wants you to initialize before you sort of go ahead and assign it. And uh, Java is probably the most widely used language today and especially in the enterprise world java c and c++ are pretty widely used and i would kind of think that it sort of sits very well with the overall structure and the way the languages are used as well so if you look at large enterprise corporations they would use something which is static and which is more controlled and you know which is more structured because that's the way we they they could have some control over the code while in in our organizations which are uh, in a phase of uh, you know creating new uh, new products they would typically look at as you know a weak or a or a dynamic language because they want to quickly move from point a to point b without the language being a constraint uh, so that's my two cents about these languages and the kind of uh, typing styles we have hope you understood the basic concepts of static dynamic strong, strong and weak thank you very much have a great day